Aha! This is Laborde, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Let's get our airbrush, which is nice and clean, and works every time without a problem, and build up our flames from the darkest color, which is going to be Evil Sun's Scarlet. It is okay if you don't cover all the flames 100%, and especially the end of the flames, because it will create the effect that the flames are a bit smoky, like uh, Granny's vision thanks to her grey cataract. Then spice it up with some white rider red to introduce some orangish red to the fire. Try to aim towards the center of the flames. Fire is usually hottest at the center, so we can highlight it towards the center more to make it look more realistic. You can find some nicely curved flames and uh, ball-like explosions on this mini, so I leave those balls bottom part dark like it's a smoky explosion. Now increase the orange hue with Trolls layer orange, reducing the highlight area, and cover 80% of the previous layer. By the way, more and more of you send me the results of your work, and Papa Laborts is so proud of you guys. You enter competitions with your work and trying out NMM for the first time and getting more confident with it, it's really heartwarming and do send me more of your work or uh, tag me on Instagram if you followed any of my tutorials. With Flash Gits Yellow, we move more towards the center, indicating the hottest points of the flame. Yellow is always a great color to increase the light values on your paint job, and since we are painting fire, it's an obvious choice. Lastly, we add ice yellow to those flaming wings, aiming mostly behind the angel, because our uh, angel guy is the hottest part of the flames, not literally, but uh, the flames are his wings. We are creating the focal point by creating the brightest parts of the flame around his silhouette. I sprayed a bit too much ice yellow at the previous stage, so I muted it back with some flash gets yellow, so the flames are less saturated. If you prefer the previous stage, by all means, skip this part, like uh, Granny skips her medicine intake. With the wings done, it's time to work on the robes. This is the stage where you should make a picture of the mini, because the airbrushes overspray created a nice sketch for the OSL effect, but we still have some dark tones on the torso we can use for the highlights. Highlight placement wise, this is not an easy mini, because we have these flames coming from the sides, and yet we need some natural highlights if we want to paint something that looks like the box art. We use word barrels red and cover all the folds. You can leave some recesses on the middle black and maybe glaze some over them to make it darker if that's what you prefer. For the first highlight, I used Evil Sense Scarlet. The closer the folds to the flames, the bigger these highlights will be. Don't worry, I'm not painting the whole mini orange and yellow because of the OSL. I imagine that this guy is outside somewhere in the daylight. I know it doesn't make much sense because you encounter him in a dark dungeon, but I know most of you guys prefer the box art style and the OSL is only as dominant as the amount of light the environment has. So the more light the environment has, the less dominant will be our OSL staining the mini. Then smooth out the transitions with some glazing. This back and forth glazing kinda becoming my main blending style. 
uh, no shit, Papa Labot I never saw you glaze before. Yeah, I know, but I used to do it in one direction. And at my age, doing new stuff like that is extremely rare. Anyway, I encourage you to try it because the transitions are a bit smoother. Now we use Wild Rider Red again. And uh, spoiler alert, we are going to use the same colors as we used for the flames to create the highlights. But Papa Laborts, you said our OSL won't stain the whole mini. Yes, that's true, but you can use these colors to paint a red cloak with a bit of orange issue any day. What is important to keep in mind that the ratios of these colors are going to be much more different on the surface of the robe. I use the same method as in the previous steps. Thin layer to sketch out the highlights and then glaze back and forth with the new and the previous color to blend it. With truss layer orange, highlight the lower parts of the robes and sides by gradually decreasing the highlight areas. Truss layer orange has a pure coverage, so you need a couple of layers to make it opaque. Remember, the closer to the flame the folds are, the more orange you need. Lastly, add a tiny bit of flesh gets yellow to the brightest parts. You see I'm focusing on the sides of the mini and not on the center because that's where the flames are coming from. Ok, let's paint all the leather and gold parts with Dumbo Brown. Use base layer consistency so you only need one coat. Nice reddish brown, perfect for our environment. Ok, I took a little break and uh, when I looked at the mini I thought these robes are too bright for what I was aiming for. So I muted the highlights glazing some word barrels red over them. Just a few layers to make it less vibrant. After that I wasn't really happy yet so I glazed some rhinoxide over the mid-tones and the shadowy parts. I didn't touch the highlights, those were dull enough, just a few layers of glaze to the darker areas of the robe. Ok, now that the robes are done, let's work on the gold enamel all the swords, crossguards, breastplate and mask. So the light is coming from both sides, so I just sketched the highlights leaving a little bit of Dumbo Brown in the middle. It's like a little pause in music. NMM is much like that. You need tiny breaks between the colors to enhance the contrast and uh, make it look like metal. On the mask, it is important to create bigger highlight areas because we want our focal point to be there, so we need to make that the brightest. Not gonna lie, I just wing the highlights on the face with the plan that I will make the left side a tiny bit more bright because of the big uh, flame coming from the right, but apart from that I didn't look at my photos for highlight references and it gave me some headache later, so use the reference photos that you take for the highlights please. On the pommel of the swords, try to create a bigger circle on the top right part and the smaller on the bottom left part. That will enhance the shape and will create realistic reflections on these little balls. After that we glaze some of the larger surfaces Try not to hit the crevices of the armor or I will slap on your tiny hand. We want those recesses to be dark to have some nice depth and definition. Ok, now let's reduce the highlight areas with some Zamesi Desert. We are picking out smaller and smaller parts of our previous layer. I'm using thin layers so this will reduce the blending time when it comes to glazing. On the breastplate I try to move the highlights to the center of the armor panels. 
you don't have much room to paint several highlight areas separated with Dumbbell Brand, so I use the old trick that you can do with small objects. You just paint a gradient and uh, hope for the best. On the mask, I highlight the same areas as I would if it would be a regular human skin. These are the eyebrows, forehead, cheeks, chin and the top part of the mouth and the lips. There is uh, really not much to it. Ok, moving on to the next highlight. Add some ice yellow to the Zamesi Desert and reduce the highlight areas even more. Try to keep the separation between the hair locks on the mask so it could have some depth to it and look crispy. You don't want to highlight the horns too much because uh, they would cast shadows on the bottom part of them because of the huge flames behind them. You can try and edge highlight depending on the quality of your uh, spikes, but uh, I would rather not because it will only emphasize the imperfections of the shape. The mask is ok regarding mold lines and uh, some deformalities, but for price to quality ratio I think Simon Minis are still a bargain, so if you can paint Simon Minis nicely, you can paint anything really well. But as I said, this is not too bad. The flames are the worst part uh, regarding the mold lines because there were some huge gaps that were taken care of with some green stuff, but that's no big deal for me. Papa Laborts is used to this. Alrighty, now for the other element parts. I use dark sea blue for our foundation. You can, you can use some dark green too, it would work just as nice, but I think orange is uh, more dominant on this mini, so I'm going to uh, paint it with this dark grey blue. Then I went in with downstone to sketch out the highlights. Later I realized that uh, it's a bit bright, because I want to use administrative grey after this, if you ever tried Administratum Grey over Dunstone, it's just a bit brighter grey, so the highlights won't be that dominant and uh, rather just blends in uh, incrementally, which is great if uh, that is what you aim for, but uh, on these tiny little blades it wouldn't make that much difference in their value. I tried to apply these highlights uh, diagonally because there is not much room for blending. I also paint the sword with Dunstone. Uh, I didn't use dark sea blue on the sword because uh, looking at the environment of the blade there shouldn't be that dark of a shadow. Basically the whole thing is surrounded by flames and we need to communicate that with our paint job, but uh, that comes later. Ok, now with administratum grey I create some diagonal sections so we will have some nice highlights. On the sword I try to make the highlights close to the flames. It would make sense that those highlights are the brightest. Uh, I make some reflections on the other side of the blade too, to make it more interesting. Now I add some sunny skin tone to the administratum grey and reduce the highlight areas. Uh, skip that part, because it won't work, it looks weird and <laughs> I'm even going to highlight it with uh, pure uh, sunny skin tone creating a colorful <laughs> NMM effect uh, with colors that are not introduced to the rest of the paint job, so it uh, makes no sense. And not even that, but uh, <laughs> I thought that uh, sunny skin tone somehow uh, will imitate uh, some OSL without having the color uh, in the flames, so yeah. Papa Laborts has some uh, weaker days, but uh, don't worry, I will fix it later. So I got a bit uh, frustrated with those parts, and I thought the best way to deal with the problems is to ignore them, because that's how you usually screw the parts uh, on your minifix themselves. So I started to work on the leather parts, mixing some Trust layer orange to the Dumbo brown, and uh, how interesting, <laughs> if I use colors that actually present on the flames, it suddenly looks good. Papa Labors used his brain this one time. I should do that a bit more. <laughs> 
probably. Try to highlight the section that hugged by the flames. Don't forget about the poor coverage of Trost layer orange, so you need more layers. You would think that uh, Dumbo Brown has great coverage, so it's easy street. But no, uh, Trost layer orange will uh, reduce that uh, quality of Dumbo Brown, so you should need a handful of layers. Alright, add a tiny bit of sunny skin tone to the mix. Don't worry, this time it's okay to use it and uh, increase the intensity of the OSL around the brightest parts that are closest to the flames. Pure Trolls layer orange and paint those leather strips on the back and make a gradient over the center. I mean, a gradient if these uh, leather strips would be one continuous color. So you can uh, go around the edges to make them a bit defined and uh, reduce the intensity of the gradients towards the chest. You need a couple of layers, but it will look nice and smooth like Renny's butt cheek. Uh, glaze some of that orange on the sword, next to the admin grey part, so it will look like that the blade reflects some of the flames around it. You need to dilute uh, Troas layer orange a bit more, uh, but that's okay, because the poor coverage uh, quality will be handy when glazing and creating a smooth gradient. Okay, now we need a bit of orange on the side of the mask too. So glaze over the darker brown parts a couple of times to get a subtle OSL effect there as well. You need a handful of layers. Once it's opaque enough, go in with the glaze of flash gets yellow and uh, reduce the highlight area in the truss layer orange layer. This will increase the OSL effect and make it look more realistic. But Papa Laborts, we didn't use any yellow on the leather straps and those were closer to the flame. That is true, but we are using it on the mask because metal is much more reflective than leather, so it makes sense that the flames are more visible on it. See? Sometimes Papa Laborts is smart. Now get your words brush with the split head because we are stapling some highlights on the leather to create some texture. This is almost like dry brushing, so wipe off your brush on a paper towel so you only have a tiny bit of moisture between the bristles. Gently push the brush to the surface, creating these small dotted areas. Then with Talar sand, I go back to create some tiny scratches. You need to have a very nice brush for this, with a very nice tip and uh, very little paint. So shape your brush and the uh, key to these tiny lines is to be super gentle, like when you're blowing Granny's hot soup before you feed her. Okay, so that was the point when I was really fed up with those tiny blades. As soon as this faint orange started to disappear, Papa Laborts' heart started to fill with joy like when Granny offers you some freshly cooked chicken heads. Mm. Now it's time to do the unholy halo. The foundation for that is black. Then word barrels red for 50% of the surface and use thin layers and most importantly stippling. But Papa Laports, you can do this real fast with an airbrush. Why waste time with glazing? First of all, how dare you say glazing is a waste of time? You'll get an extra big slap on your tiny hand. And secondly, you are right, you can do that with an airbrush, but unfortunately only on one side. The other side is blocked uh, with some flame cocks, so you can't really use the airbrush there. So we need to glaze, like uh, a lot. Back and forth with black and word barrels red until it's smooth enough. Remember to always do the same motion with your brush and use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. You only go in with a new layer of glaze when the previous one dried. Otherwise, your tiny hand will have the same colors as this halo. You do not want that. If your gradient is smooth enough, 
Paint the edges with Evil Sun Scarlet using some stippling again. We are glazing again. It will be a little bit easier and faster, but it's still going to take a bit of time. But there is no way around it, unfortunately. After that I worked a bit on the flame birds. Or uh, flame cocks, if you prefer. I used the same colors like I did on the flames, just increase the highlights on them to pop out a bit. Now we paint the scarf around his waist, which in Europe we refer to as a belt. Okay, so it's kind of an off-white cloth, so I mixed some uh, screaming school with tallard sand for the base coat. Uh, do not paint the recesses, we need those high contrast shadows to have some nice definition and depth. Then uh, highlight those folds with screaming school, focusing on the top part. I use KDM Flash Tone in a thin layer consistency to highlight the hands. The overspray of the airbrush created the OSL effect on its own, so we just need a touch of skin colors so it makes it clear that those hands are not covered in uh, gloves or something. Aim for the top part of the fingers so we don't lose the shadows. Ok, then I thought that those flames on the sword are a bit dull, so I enrich them with some Flash Gits Yellow and Ice Yellow. Same way how I airbrush them. So the brighter color I use, the more I focused it toward the center of the flame. Use very thin coats when you are painting over an airbrushed surface, so it won't be visible uh, which one is the work of the airbrush and which one is the work of the brush. I also used ice yellow to add the maximum highlights over the miniature and uh, increase the contrast. Very thin coats, almost like a glaze, because ice yellow is a very dense and high in pigments, so you can have a nice coverage with a bit of a dilution. Lastly, I mixed some tiny bit of ice yellow to the Evil Sun Scarlet and highlighted the folds on the rope close to the waist. For finishing touches, I went back on the metal feathers and blended the colors on the bigger ones with some glazing and I felt much better after that. You see, glazing is even good for your mood. With that, Uriel is finished and he is ready to burn your heroes alive and make them nice and crunchy like Granny's pig cracklings. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my patrons who support this kind of videos. With special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Dominic Reitman, Trying to Paint Menes, Jonathan Mausner, Ruzak, Vlad D, and EarthApple21. If you want to support the work of Papa Labors, you can do that on Patreon, where you can vote on the next mini and have early access to these videos. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek.